On this property, there's over a hundred species of plants. Some people collect stamps or coins, and I went for plants and so did Jenna because you can um, grow them and reap the benefits as far as like the food or the view. That's why Don Iden opted for a backyard food forest and wildlife habitat when he bought his house in 1993. Jenna Beckham shares his botanical intrigue to cultivate tasty and beautiful experiments. We've got the classic um, tangerine, orange, lemon, and lime, and then some additional ones that aren't so common. There's a pomilla and then Thai lime, also called kaffir lime. Beyond the pomilla and the Thai lime are dwarf plants that I ordered in a seed catalog over 10 years ago. That's the height they got. So they didn't become giant um, citrus. They became um, compact, and, but they're still supposed to produce regular sized fruit. They're in containers so they can be brought in during the winter. Don overwinters them in his garage. I keep a light on constantly. I've got a little fluorescent light. So they get light sometimes 24 hours a day. I think he's a little worried of losing plants, so he likes to bring them in. But over the years, he's becoming a little more open to putting things in the ground. Yeah, yeah um, my concept is you have mobility. Um, one of the things about a lot of these plants within all the hundreds of plants, some of them are cold sensitive. Their vigorous tomato crop begins in winter by starting seeds indoors, usually in January. Since window light isn't enough, they install a grow light. A heat mat underneath the seed flats speeds germination. We germinate all our seeds and we save them from the prior year. So we've got Roma, Cherokee Purple. That's a new variety we planted this year. It's called Patio Tomato. And it's supposed to be a smaller bushy form and ideal for pots. So um, we like to maximize the space that we have. Jenna stabilizes wire cages with bamboo. I drilled holes in the ground with a drill bit and wired the, the bamboo onto the cage and then we placed a bucket full of compost in the middle with holes drilled, drilled into the sides so we can water directly the compost bucket and the resulting moisture that comes out helps fertilize the plants. Um, I've got a good heavy mulch on the base of the plants. I've got a cutworm collar for, for the new plants. I do use an organic fertilizer every couple of weeks. Just make sure everything stays tie it up to the cage so you can get your way through there. The netting is wonderful. It's kept the birds from pecking the tomatoes. It's kept the squirrels from taking them. As soon as they turn, start to turn the slightest shade of red, they're prime picking for, for the varmints. So um, in the past, we would have to, as soon as they would start to turn, we'd have to yank the tomatoes off the vine and let them ripen on the counter. But now we're able to leave them on the vine longer. And it was just that bird netting from the home improvement store, I took a couple rolls and stitched, stitched it together with fishing twine, just tied knots. Jenna topped the stakes with slices of pool noodles to anchor the net without tearing. For year-long harvest, they jumpstart next season's crops as the current ones head out. We've been harvesting broccoli. I've planted some eggplant underneath the broccoli, so when the broccoli's done, we can uh, either cut it or get it out of the ground, whichever is easier. Within this area, there are different light levels, and so we can experiment and see what works here. We can grow a garden here and another garden here. Sometimes, again, it works just right, and sometimes it doesn't, and right now we have a balance. We've got a melon collection in different areas, so we go through the spectrum, just like what you'd find on a produce section of a store. So we've got like the cantaloupe, honeydew, watermelon, and uh, again, we've got the um, spectrum of squashes, pumpkin, yellow squash and zucchini. And carrots and beets and leeks. We've got a variety of fresh herbs steps away from the kitchen. There's garlic and cilantro. We have a mint collection with several types of mints. Spearmint, peppermint, and some unusual mints that I just heard this year. There's chocolate mint, orange mint, and pineapple mint. And then there's basil and um, kind of alphabetic. We've got oregano. Um, rosemary, sage over off to the side, and then thyme. One of the mints is under the water hose, so as we turn it off, it gets a drink every time, and, and a mint love wet feet. And they are in pots because they're invasives. And the pots are actually black plastic pots, and he's painted them with a spray paint, just because 
the black pots can get too hot in the summertime and, and make the soil too hot. And it matches the house a little bit better. It's the same color <laughs> and it doesn't look like something that just came out of a nursery. They make their own compost to fertilize both container and bedded plants. Annual and perennial flowers zing up the color scheme and feed abundant wildlife. And I had a collection of plants um, being the um, purple wandering Jew on the corner and cannas. And so I thought, well, it'd be neat to have a flower garden around the bird bath. And Janet designed and built the frame. One of the things about the concept of that garden is symmetry and color variety. It's basically got the spectrum of visible light. So from red to violet, you've got it in there. So it, it's pretty much everything. So if somebody has a favorite color, it's probably in that garden. For back fence texture, a ginkgo tree joins sago palm and river fern. Their growing intrigue led to a collection of low maintenance, water thrifty succulents. In Central Texas summers, they've got a healthy collection of mosquitoes too. Janet extended evening hours outside with a campout style mosquito tent. We can come out and enjoy the view without having mosquitoes eat us up. Beyond the plants, the 100 plus species, we have a variety of wildlife. So we've got over a dozen species of bird and within that um, several songbirds. Um, we have um, four species of lizards that reside on this area and we've got um, over four species of butterfly. Jan is actually called this paradise because you can come out here and you've got all the blossoms and wildlife going on. We both enjoy it and it's kind of tranquil.